I'm meteorologist Lisette Gonzalez. We continue to track Hurricane Adalia and we have the latest update, the 11 a.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center. And you'll notice that the Maxisine winds have increased to 85 miles per hour. The pressures drop slightly. Adalia is intensifying as a forecast. It's moving north at 14 miles an hour and you can see that eyewall has formed and it is actually uh, just to the west now here of the Keys as it will continue to track north over the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. It is expected to become a category two hurricane later today and unfortunately it is anticipated to intensify into a dangerous major category three hurricane overnight and into tomorrow morning with possibility of 125 mile per hour winds that has changed as we are seeing that the National Hurricane Center is now expecting an even stronger major hurricane to impact portions of the Gulf Coast of Florida. As for now, the forecast track indicates the center could be making landfall along the Big Bend area, but any little wobble or shift in the track will, of course, impact the difference in what will be felt here across the Gulf Coast and even along the West Coast of Florida. Now, as we head into tomorrow evening, Dahlia is now expected to weaken to a tropical storm, and it will continue to remain a tropical storm going into Thursday and Friday as it turns to the northeast and does bring heavy rain, gusty winds and tropical storm conditions to the southeastern United States before it finally moves offshore out into the Atlantic. Hurricane warnings, storm surge warnings continue for much of the uh, Gulf Coast here of the state, especially around uh, the Panhandle, the Big Bend here along the coast through Tampa Bay and then areas here along the southwest coast of Florida under a tropical storm warning. Tropical storm watch is in effect for the lower keys. Tropical storm warning is in effect for the dry Tortugas. One of the biggest concerns with Hurricane Idalia is the potential for life threatening and destructive storm surge of 8 to 12 feet. This is expected to be above ground level, by the way, for the Big Bend area. And then just south of there, 6 to 9 feet in terms of storm surge around the Tampa Bay area, 4 to 7 feet, about 2 to 5 feet possible for the southwest coast of the state, and then a 1 to 2 feet storm surge possible for the Keys. And on top of that, we have the higher than normal king tides as tomorrow we have that full blue moon. And that means that any storm surge could be exacerbated and enhanced because of the higher than normal tides. What about rainfall? Obviously, the highest rainfall totals and the potential for the more severe flooding will be across the Big Bend here in northern Florida and here along the west coast of Florida. Here in South Florida, we could see one to two inches of rain with isolated higher amounts and there have already been some gusty squalls moving in across parts of South Florida. For us, minimal impacts as compared to what the rest of the state will be experiencing, right? Since we are going to see Idalia passing well to our west and the center staying in the Gulf of Mexico. However, gusty bands of rain will be moving through from time to time. It won't be an all-day rain event, but rainfall totals, as I mentioned, one to two inches. Breezy to windy conditions, gusts of 35 to 45 miles per hour. So hang on to the umbrella because when a gusty downpour or a squall moves through your neighborhood, you're going to need to hang on to your rain gear. Storm surge of one to two feet, as I mentioned, in the lower keys is also a big threat. So I do want to time it out for you as we head throughout the rest of the morning. Gusts as high as 38 miles per hour in the keys as those first rain bands begin to push in. Notice how the eye of Idalia will be well off to our west, but as it makes its closest pass, the outer bands will be pushing through this afternoon into the evening. I think some of the worst weather as winds will gust as high as 40 miles per hour stronger for the Keys for Miami Dade and Broward 20 to 30 mile per hour gusts that will likely last through tonight could be blustery at times with those rain bands pushing through as we head into tomorrow morning. Notice that although Idalia will be well off to our north and west, we're still going to be dealing with the moisture and the rain bands and gusts as high as 31 miles per hour for the Keys in the morning as high as 25 to 30 mile per hour gusts late morning and through the afternoon we could see even in gustier conditions, gusts as high as 35 to 45 mile per hour. So even into tomorrow for your Wednesday, it is looking wet and windy. And then on Thursday, we should see conditions improve and the wind should lighten up. Gusts will then be back down to around 15, 20 miles per hour in Broward and Dade through the Keys, 20 mile per hour gust possible. And there will still be the chance for some passing showers and storms.